Alrighty, well, good evening, everybody, and, I, and then, um, a few days ago, I got this, um, one of my regulars suggested I try this game out called Cook, Serve, Delicious. Um, it's, as you probably, as is probably obvious, it's a cooking game. Um, you're running a food truck, and you, you're making stops here and there, you're serving customers food and all that, so, so, basically, Meals on Wheels, you're basically a mobile diner, so, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a kind of a kind of a tutorial. Um, I did start playing this game like a few days ago, in case I didn't say already. Um, so this is part tutorial and part part things I've learned today. I guess be another way of looking at it. Now, uh, and like usual, I'm gonna have some music in the background. Um, this wasn't my first choice. Um, a lot of the other music that I wanted to play is copyrighted. Um, I was trying to keep it food related. Uh, but the best I could find was this, uh, two hour retro repetitive 1950s diner ambience video with a vinyl jukebox and all that. So, did a copyright check on it. It checked out. So, I'll just be having that in the background. Yeah, I do kind of need to do a bit of a sound check. Um, I'll probably have to turn that up a little bit. Yeah, that is still kind of quiet. Okay, um, I'll just go ahead and say close it up on the music. Okay, so, Cook, Serve, Delicious 3. Um, and this is going to be kind of a disorganized tutorial. Like, uh, I'll try to start with the basics, but uh, I tend to be very whimsical when it comes to this kind of stuff. Like, if, you're, if I come across something else that I want to show you, all in a branching off and showing you that, so there's no actual official chapters or anything like that, so... Oh, and on top of that, I still have a, I still have my cast video that I still need to get going on too. So I'm gonna try to keep this short. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna do this a little different. Um, I'm just gonna show you the uh, basic building block of this game. As you can see here, the goal is to just to cook food, and you need to cook it quickly, and you need to cook it accurately as well. So. But I'll, um, I'll just go ahead and... Oh, hang on. I've lost my train of thought. But, um, as you can kind of tell by the recipes themselves, the first number you want to look at is what's in the upper right corner. That's the difficulty number. It ranges from 0 to 5. And then, um, if you can kind of see the symbol in the middle... Um, you have HS yellow, HS red, um, SO. I'll, um, I'll go into the actual, uh, into the actual food truck and I'll kind of show you what they mean. So, to start with, um, oh, and also that little number in the center, uh, in this case here, four, that's, uh, that's your yield. That's how much, that's how much you'll make is, uh, four units for lack of a better word. And then, um, that little, the robot waitress, um, I'll kind of, I'll kind of explain a little more when I get into the food truck. But, um, you can, um, you can have her serve it instead of, you, serve that food instead of you. So. And this here, this is probably one of the biggest things that got me into this game is just like fighting games, this game has a practice mode. And you're gonna need it. With some of these more complicated uh, food items, you're gonna need all the practice you can get on them. So. Okay, so. so real quick. Okay, so you should be able to see what I got here. And I do need to turn the music down. So. To start with, if you see what's on the left here, 
I don't... I can't remember the exact term for them. I think they're called holding stations or something like that. You can kind of think of it. If you've ever been to a restaurant, like an old-fashioned restaurant, like the, you know, the old-fashioned waitress that comes up and takes your order, you give her your order, she writes it down on a notepad, sticks that notepad on, like, on one of the big revolving metal things, you know, takes that, takes that order, sticks it on there, rotates it, and the, the cook behind the counter, you know, he grabs that order and, you know, makes it. I, that's what I like to think of these as. So, customer replace their order on the left here, and then, and then, yeah, that's that on that, and then, if you look up here, where you see this green triangle moving left and right, no, I think, it, I think it's these that are the holding stations, um, basically, um, I call them grills, sometimes I call them ports, sometimes I call them stoves, but this is where you, um, this is where you make your food. Or this is where you make and store your food. More on that later. Push triangle. Oh, and also, um, this is also one of those games where there's, uh, different ways of playing. Like, I, I prefer to play with a controller, but you can also, you can play this game with a mouse. And you can play this game with a keyboard. Um, and you can't use all three interchangeably, but not always. I still haven't figured out how to make all three work at the same time. Like, I think I'm in mouse mode right now. Okay, mouse ain't working. So, looks like, it, uh, for the moment, it's going to be controller only. Um, but, uh... As far as which one's the best to use, most of the ones that I've seen, like the high-level guys, use a keyboard. But, but also it it kind of goes along the lines of like uh, the FGC, the fighting game community. They got this big running debate on which is best, which is better. Uh, is playing on a pad the best? Is playing on an arcade stick the best? Is playing on a hitbox the best, etc. Um, my answer is going to be the same answer as a lot of other people. Whatever works for you. It's, it's totally a comfort thing. Whereas I prefer to play on controller. Which, from what I understand, is the least popular way of using it. But it's it's more it's easier on my arms. Um, sorry, to go, sorry to go off the subject like this. But unlike the vast majority of other gamers... Um, I play and create content and stream sitting on the floor, sitting on the floor behind a coffee table. Most all game, most other gamers out there, they usually play their games while sitting on an office chair, on a desk, you know, so their keyboard is probably, I'd probably say around, around stomach height, right? Like, I'm probably around their, around their waist, around their stomach. Um... My keyboard is basically lower chest height. My, so my keyboard is higher up in relation to my body than most other gamers. And again, most other most other gamers have their uh, have their keyboards like around their stomach area, so they can use their arms to, to play without uh, without without much strain on their arms, or especially their upper arms. Um, whereas uh, again. I play uh, sitting on the floor, so having my controller, which is basically right, right uh, just above the floor, it allows my arms to relax, so less, less strain. Um, I actually have tried playing this on keyboard, but my uh, after a while, my upper arms start getting sore. My upper arms, um, I think uh, my forearms as well, just from my having to constantly keep my arms up, you know, constantly pressing keys and stuff. It actually made, so it's actually a bigger strain on my arms than most other people's would have. So. And, um, and then with the controller, um, I'm using a PlayStation 4 controller, you know, 
Uh, I think there are four face buttons and four shoulder buttons. So I, I, just, I find it easier to for that kind of configuration than to have have this full have this full damn keyboard. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop there because I'm going off subject. But but as you can see here, if you look in the uh, towards the upper right, see the green triangle where uh, where it says I am Goring or however you pronounce it. So yeah, it, it's L2, and this game mostly uses the trigger buttons, L2 and R2. So L2, triangle, and then the fryer opens up. And you you continue holding down L2. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. And then you push tri you push triangle, and you're still holding down L2. And this is one of the drawbacks I have to this game. Now, it, this doesn't become official until you push X. If you see at the straight bottom, cook. Okay, this is one of my little nitpicks about this game. I actually want to be able to push the X button while having L2 still held down. But see... turn off universal keys. I might consider doing that, but I know a little nitpick about this game. Like I said, you can use mouse, keyboard, and controller, but apparently not interchangeable. So, I now have to push X, and there it goes. It's cooking. And uh, I also have, uh, I got five stoves, so push, push triangle, L2, triangle again. And so rinse and repeat. And see, I just made four of them. So, oh, and if you see at the bottom, now you can, you can now look on the left. See all those blue check marks? That means their order is good to go. Now, I can actually hit each one of these individually. Orders are on their way. Oops. Ran out. Ah, and uh, hit a snag here. For this particular food, when I said uh, when I said the uh, the center is is yellow, yellow HS, that means I don't have to I don't have to uh, get their get their food straight from the uh, from the uh, the stove like at the top of the screen. I could actually do what's called a special order, like what I accidentally did here. So, so I can order straight to the customer from the left side of the screen. So, I'll do that too late now since I already messed up. And then, you see that little white clock there? That's how much time the food has to cook. So, anyway, I'm going to push triangle. Do it right this time. One, two, three, four. That'll... Four. Oh, and um, see the, uh, the green... Uh, Waitress at the bottom. I can instead have her push uh, L1 or R1, and she'll give the food to them. And uh, let's do it again. And how effective is she? She can serve all of them at once. Just go ahead and fill it all up. And then, um, if you can see the uh, yellow check mark with the question mark, that means customers' patience are starting to run out. And then again, I'm gonna push uh, L1. There we go. Serve them all up. But um, using the waitress is very valuable. Like I said, because this is just easy stuff that I'm doing right now. There's going to be some way harder recipes, so I'm not really going to have time to go through and 
click, uh, manually click every single one of these. So, it's great to have that waitress and just set them all at once, because I may not have time to. So, but, so, that's, that's the basic idea, and that's, oh, and, um, the yellow HS that you're seeing, as I said before, um, you can, uh, you can either do a custom or, or a special order for, for that individual customer, or you could just make it in the fryers like I did. Now, the red HS, however, that means that, uh, you can only make those from the, uh, from the fryers. Blank mange? Yeah, I don't... Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea here. So, so let's do a practice run on Black Mage. But, like I said, see that red HS? That means I can't do a custom order. I have to make it in the, I have to make them in the fryers. So, Okay. Now, it's, it's not going to matter that much for this particular recipe, but if you can see at the bottom of the screen, see that list? Okay, so that's the all the required ingredients you need to make that. I, it probably sounds obvious, but like I said, this is just an easy recipe right here. So... And there's a total of six ingredients, so... Now, if you look at the right... So... Okay, there's four of them. And now... Okay, how do I say it? And it looks like my controller is messing up. Now... If you could look real close in these uh, these blue icons here, L, 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 and L. Okay, that refers to the to the left side of this page. And then whenever you see R, R, that refers to the right side of the page. So for the right side of that page, you're gonna hold on the right trigger. milk and then mix and then you always have to do this after every dish despite the fact that you know it's fully and completely completed you know you did all the necessary steps you still have to push X anyway this is one of my gripes about this about this game I mean so but you push X to serve and typically you want to have the waitress do it L1 or R1 there's five of them. So let's do the same thing. But like I said, this is one of the uh, easier recipes because I could just do this. Oh, and uh, and in case anyone was to ask, all right, I gotta unplug my controller. It's it's fucking up on me. It's been doing this during the stream, during my uh, stream earlier too. So, and um, now if anyone wants to ask, yes, you can, you can hold down the right trigger while still holding down the left trigger, but I don't recommend it. A, you can get into a rhythm on this. It just it's down to muscle it's down to muscle memory. So, 
But anyway, that's what, um, and that's also what the uh, red HS means. You can only make those in the priors. And then the third type, uh, let's see. The third type, um, the SO in the middle is special order. You can only make those on the left side of the screen. They're, they're special custom made orders, so. Oh, let's go with this one here. Girl cheese, all time classic right there. It was one of my favorite foods to eat back in the day too. But this is a, but like, like I said, as indicated on the right there, this is a special order. Um, I'll kind of explain more. I'll probably do an actual, an actual, uh, actual day, I guess you could call it. See? Nothing there, so. And, uh, you open a customer by pushing square. So, same thing here. Same exact pattern as that black mage or whatever it's called. See, you know, if you, if you can develop enough muscle memory, Now, if you can see here by the clocks, you only have so much time. You only have so much time to get them the food. And if the time runs out, like that, you got burnt, and you're gonna have a pissed off customer. Like I said, this is one of the harder uh, dishes to make because of all the buttons. But on the upside, though, it's it's one simple pattern. So let me let me show you a harder one to make. Um, Ballpark burger. So let's make a ballpark burger. This is one of the harder ones. Um, and I don't think I've ever made one of these before. But and again, when you see the uh, yellow HS, that's that's a hybrid. You can make them in the you can make these in the fryers or you can make a custom order just for them. It's just whichever is easier for you at the time. So ball burger. Eat patty, so you just there's eight of them, cook them up. All right, so but now if you look over here, you don't see that blue check mark, that means there's more things you got to do for them. So this is where it gets tricky, because each customer, they're, unlike those last other dishes I made, they're not going to want everything that's on that menu on the right. They're only going to want certain things. So, so once again, um, you know, look at the uh, look at the blue icons down there. There's L, and there's R. That's going to be very valuable in tell, helping you pinpoint where these ingredients are. So, meat patty, bacon. Lettuce, uh, tomatoes, and a regular bun. Did it right. So let's go here. But um, I think all of these are always going to start with meat patty and are always going to end with regular bun. So, uh, meat patty, bacon, lettuce, no cheese. And then this is, I, in case I didn't say earlier, but you can hold down left trigger and right trigger, but it acts really wonky when you do that. Uh, so tomatoes is next. 
but instead it throws down a meat patty and tomatoes. So, this is gonna be a bad one. Yeah, didn't like that one as much. So, that's why, um, theoretically, you can hold down both trigger buttons, but it's not recommended. And I'm gonna go ahead and, um, you can also push triangle on any of these, uh, fryers, and it'll give you the option to trash it. Now, if you can see the little, little pie, pie chart thingy, that's how much time you have until these, uh, items go bad. When time runs out, you're gonna have to throw them away anyway, so... I'll do this when when the food's getting low. I'll just go ahead and trash it and start over. All right, so once again, so, oh, we got a simple one here. Uh, meat patty, switch to R. Yeah, you don't, don't hold them both down. So you want pickles and then regular bun. Simple sandwich, my kind of guy right here. Same thing here, meat patty, pickles, regular bun. That's all I like, nice and simple. So, meat patty, uh, lettuce, then switch to right. Uh, tomatoes, onions, regular bun. There we go. Oh, this guy wants a double burger. So yeah, note the two in parentheses. I many a time I've actually missed that. Like they wanted two of some. Then you want cheese, and then the regular bun. Double cheese. That's a double burger. The Ryan Davis, huh? So we got the meat patty, bacon, two cheese, and we got tomatoes and then regular bun. Meat patty, lettuce, tomatoes, regular bun. But believe it or not, like I said earlier, this is one of the easy, this is one of the easier hard items to make. Because it always starts with a meat patty and always ends with a regular bun. So you do have a little bit of predictability with this. And so, in case anyone's wondering, well, how hard can these dishes get? Well, let's, let's pick a difficulty five one here. Um, preferably one that I've done before. Oh, let's make a pizza. So, like I said, the, diff the difficulty on here ranges from 0 to 5, 5 being the hardest. So... And once again, you really gotta follow that menu down there. And we got multiple pages. So, in order to, in order to go to the next page, you push circle. That's all, only when you don't have a trigger button. See, see what's going on? Oh, excuse me. See what's going on there? You want to go to the next page? Hit circle. There's page two. And if you look down here, again, the color of the icon corresponds to the color of the page. So, and then you got L, meaning the left side of that page, and then you got R, the right side of that page. So, so yeah. Stuffed. Red sauce, and then cheese, and then page two, and we got macaroni, sausage, ground beef, bacon. That, that should do it. So we got him going. So same thing here. We got a three pager. So stuff. Alfredo sauce, cheese, next page, ground beef, yeah, just get, like I said, the waitress is very valuable, because I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be able to back out of here and serve them personally, so, 
ground beef, parmesan, chicken, next page, olives, green peppers, red peppers, and that should do it. Cook that. So we got thin, pesto sauce, cheese, next page, parmesan, next page, olives, spinach, green peppers, cook that. Did it right. But yeah, notice notice all the steps. So thin, pesto, cheese, next page, chicken, next page, mushrooms, cook that. Did it right. If you thought for whatever reason, oh, it doesn't seem that hard, try doing this when there's a time limit involved. Try doing this when you have a whole bunch of other foods that you also have to cook. So, but I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a day. Um, just to give you guys a, an idea of how the game flows. Um, I won't do the tutorial. You don't really need to see that. I'll, uh, I'll just go ahead and do this one. Uh, simply solids. Now, as it says here, I don't know how well you guys can see it, but uh, you can. Uh, customers have a have kind of a patience meter. If they have to stand and wait too long, they up and leave, and it impacts your rating. And in order to get a gold rating on any of these runs. Your orders have to be perfect. They have you have to serve all the customers and all your orders have to be totally correct. So there can't be any mistakes. I'm gonna take another drink. So to give you an idea as to how that works, I'll go ahead and set it to standard. Now, one thing I learned today about this, probably the most important statistic is actually the yield. Again, if you can look at the number in the center, like I have it over glazed donut, eight, this is what you want to be looking at. You, you don't want to be out. Uh, you don't want to be putting no, no poor servings or even worse, garden salad. That's the worst one I've seen so far. It only makes three. And, uh, Unless, it, unless it's something that can happen later on. Um, customers only want one of a particular food item. Like, they're not going to want two glazed donuts. They only want one. So, so once again, the big thing you want to look at is the um, yield. There's eight Cinnabons. So we'll add that to menu. Eight glazed donuts. We'll add that to the menu. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, steak fingers. We'll go ahead and add that to the menu. Okay, and that does it for the HSs. Now for the special order ones. And these ones here. All special order customers only want one of an item. It's kind of like what I said a few moments ago. So, what you really pick here doesn't matter much because it's only going to make one. So, I'll go ahead and go with crab legs because they're not very hard to make. Um, I'll go ahead and go with grilled chicken, my favorite, and mushroom squares. Um, I don't like these personally, but uh. At my, at the place I work at, I, I, I always make sure to get get at least one a day. They're um, they're chocolate peanut butter rice crispy bars. They're uh, you know peanut butter rice crispy bars with uh, with chocolate frost with with chocolate on top. That shit is awesome. So yeah, I get those at work at least. I try to get those every day on there. So oh, most certainly at a, 
So yeah, I'll go ahead and add those to my new list. So. And so here's how the day works. Today it's probably going to be a series of three stops. And in between those stops, you can cook food and um, customers will start giving you special orders during that time too, like they call ahead. I mean, kind of like what you can do with Subway. I, you can um, you can call the you can call the Subway store, order your sandwich, you know, pre-order it, and then you know, in the hopes that by the time you get down there, they'll have it ready for you. You can do the same thing here in this game. All right, chef, show me what you got. And that's this is a uh, this is part of the lore that actually is actually starting to grow on me the racing aspect and in fact later on in the game as part of the story you're gonna you'll be able to compete in uh food truck races like you gotta you know you gotta get from point a to point b serving all the customers before everybody else does so yeah i hmm, never thought of that so left crab legs. And then, before you reach your stop, when a special order has been made, you'll do that, you'll put it in it to go. I think I might have messed it up. Trash that. is about We're to spoil, there. so just trash it and start over. that
Bye bye. Oh, barely got that one. Uh, just take fingers. <sighs> Freaking did it. Got a gold out of it too. So. Whoa! I think that's a perfect run. And um, if you could serve um, if you can serve 80 customers in a row without messing up, every order you make after that will be um, I mean, will be delicious orders, will be perfect ones. And from there on out, every customer you satisfy will will get you one of these. But it's, it's gonna be a pretty long, hard road though in order to get a uh, 80 of them. Otherwise, um, that's the game. Um, I just gotta go ahead and do a do a gameplay tutorial-ish video on it. So why don't you go ahead and call it good here? Uh, but thanks for uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope this helped you all out. And I'll see you all next time. Take care.